recorded version. Plus, I get to leave a little bit early today. I got permission to leave early because I'm flying to Massachusetts. I'm really excited. I had a dream last night that I, I drove to the airport from here and I forgot to pick up my dad. He's at my house and I was at the airport in my dream and I was like, how am I going to get my dad here? So my, um, I have to go home, pick up my dad, and then Uber over to the airport. So, so my flight leaves at 3.15 today, so I'm excited. I wrote a lot of good notes on your blue sheet. So if you'd like to take your phone out to take a picture right now, or you'd like to take your blue sheet out to write that down, this will tell you everything you need. Or you could watch the video later. <laughs> so um, what I wanted to do is my um, seventh period will not get me a face-to-face -face lesson today. They'll get a video recorded lesson. So today's lesson, as you can see, is material we're covering, but I did not put it on the quiz. So this assignment for today will also be extra credit. Some of you need it after the first quiz. Some of you didn't have homework. Um, so definitely when those extra credit options are offered, do them if you need that extra credit. My pre-calc headed people and my college algebra headed people, today's lesson is in both of those classes. So I highly recommend you learn it. Whether it'll be on the April 11th uh, test or not will be determined when you get your review sheet on the 10th. So I'll let you know if this lesson will come up again. So definitely it is part of our curriculum. But with me going out of town early, I didn't feel it was fair that you guys get a face-to-face -face lesson and uh, seventh period has to teach themselves. So anytime I just feel something's not there, I'll just kind of curve that quiz a little bit. So anybody absent today will still be taking the quiz on Tuesday. So if you're watching the video because you were absent, you're still taking the quiz on Tuesday. Um, on Monday, we'll get a review sheet. I'm going to actually give it out early today so that everybody has it. Um, the sub will have extra copies on Monday. So you'll be in my room with a sub on Monday. I got Miss Basta. She's great. And then um, when I come in on Tuesday, it'll be a little while since I've seen you. But you all know, and it says on the sheet, that homework is due on the quiz day. So just stay on top of it. The homeworks that will come in are Tuesday, Wednesday, to uh, yesterday's Thursday, and also Mondays. This one would be optional. So if you'd like to go ahead and do, what is it? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Four graphs. Oh my gosh, that's a point in each of extra credit for each graph. That's pretty generous. So if you want to do these four graphs, um, then you would get extra credit points. Um, the Albert I.O. that was assigned last Monday has a due date of this Monday. It should already be done. So if you didn't do your Albert I.O. number 11, that's a great review of the quiz we took on um, Monday, this, or this, as long as been mo this Monday. So it'd be great review for you if you did not do good on that first purple quiz. The um, Albert I.O. number 11 is due on Monday. There won't be any more reminders after this because I won't see you until... Um, Tuesday. And then there's an Albert I.O. number 12 that's going to be due on the next Monday, the 10th. All of this, if you clicked on the Albert I.O., would tell you due dates. But what I did is this number 12 reviews this material. So what I did is I made this one be uh, very helpful for remediation and after the quiz, or if you do it ahead of time, it would help prepare you for your quiz that's on Tuesday. Your quiz on Tuesday is eight questions. Um, there'll be four graphs. It only covers the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday lesson. So if you feel good about, um, you know, finding those restrictions, um, coming up with equations from the asymptotes, um, looking at that general form where they move left and right and up and down in yesterday's lesson. Um, yesterday's lesson just added the holes in the graph. So if you haven't watched that, watch yesterday's lesson. And then um, from here, I need you before the bell, please. Um, school starts at the same time every morning, so should be able to get in time. Uh, and then um, uh, that's all I have for you guys. Do you have any questions about expectations? They are clear. When your parents say, my kid doesn't know what's going on, I call, I say, that's not true. They get this, and then I go over it. So make sure, this is the video I play back to them. Now I say this every period, six times a day. So make sure you guys are doing what you're supposed to. Um, I won't take the homework after Tuesday. Um, so that's, that's not going to change. You guys ready to go? Let's look at this one. OK, let's go into our last example of the day. This is all we got. Then we're going to go over to homework. I'm even going to start the homework with you today. Um, make sure you have a graphing calculator. And then I'll leave that blue sheet up at the end for anybody that missed 
what's the expectation. I'll put that up as a, and you can take a picture again if you missed it. Okay, last lesson for 9-4. Woo! Okay, so when we look at these, we're going to be graphing rational functions again. We've graphed them over and over again. Um, we graphed ones that look like this. So there'll be two with a number on top. It does not necessarily a, a one. And then we'll move them left and right and up and down. And those are our traditional ones. Then we had ones yesterday where they looked a little bit more like this. And when we go ahead and factor, something cancels out. And when they cancel out, it makes a whole. So those are the two types we've seen so far. If you did yesterday's homework, make sure you go all the way to number 20. Number 20 is on the quiz. So some of you cut corners and don't do the last problem in a homework. And so make sure you go all the way to 20 because 20 is on the quiz. And um, you'll have additional practice. The ones I'm talking about will be on your review sheet. These four down here, there's two of them. And these ones up here, there's two of those. So that's where you get your four graphs. I mean, you guys will get this. It'll be in the oral review sheet. Um, you'll get it before you leave today. Any questions? I should just record it and then like press a button when they come in for a second and I can like do something as I'm repeating myself. Carson? Okay, so you should be checking your blue sheet. Second, firstly, you came in late. So grab your blue sheet and you can look and see when our quiz is. But that's the whole thing. Now I'm repeating myself because you were late. So our quiz is Tuesday. I'll put this up at the end. You can take a picture so you know everything that's expected, okay? But that's not a fair expectation that I'm going to repeat myself for one student that can't get here on time. I'm sorry. I've got to be very honest with you right now. So go ahead and take a picture at the end. Other than that, I'm going to get started with the lesson. Okay, so what we notice here is, first off, some of you don't have notes out, so take out your notes because that's another thing I know when I talk to mom and dad. Uh, oh, he doesn't take notes in my class, so go ahead. Let me take those notes out. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right on in. We look at this and we see that there's X's on top. So they're not the traditional ones that go left and right and up and down. We're going to have something we have to do first. The first thing we have to do is factor. Which part of this factors, um, Tanner, top or bottom? The top. And then, um, Jazz, what are you going to do to factor the top? How do we factor that? X to the second plus 2X plus 1. What do we make? A little what? Yeah, the little x plus. So we make a little table. And Jazz, what would you tell me it has to multiply to? The one. And what does it have to add to? Two. And there's only one way to get that. What times what will give you one? One times one. So the factors will be exactly the same here. x plus one and x plus one again. And the bottom will be the x plus four. So will you factor on your quiz? Yes, you'll factor twice. It might be the table that Jazz is recognizing, or it could be GCF, or it could be difference of squares. So now, does anything cross out? No, that's the new part of the lesson. So when we look at this today, nothing is canceling. So what does that mean? I have no holes in the graph. So yesterday we learned about a thing called holes. If they cancel, there's a hole. And we had holes all over the place, like big old holes in the graph. This one has no holes. Let's check for the VAs and um, HAs. So, um, Angie, what do we remember in order to remember the X's and Y's? What's my little corny thing so you remember where X goes and Y goes? What does it spell? Vax, very good. What was the other one? I'm sorry. A and hey, very good. So every time you look and I'm asking for an asymptote, the first thing I do is I, I write the word hey, H-A-Y, and vax, V-A-X. I'm not writing this X and Y just to, you know, whatever. That's the labeling that has to go along with it. And then once I have that labeled, my eyes go to a certain spot. Giselle, where am I going to look for that H? Uh, I'm going to do that, um, the V-A. Where am I going to look for the V-A? Where do we look for V-A? Turn this to blue. Do I want to know that? That's okay. Go ahead, Olivia. I'm going to look at the denominator. Yeah, whenever they say x equals, it makes my eyes go to the bottom of the denominator. Good. And then what do I have to do? I've into that denominator. I got to set it equal to zero. So there's some good space over here. We'll set it equal to zero, and we're going to see that we now have um, a VA, which is called a vertical asymptote, at negative four. 
So I like to put that on my graph. I gave you lots of good space. Go on over, put in um, some kind of vertical line going through the negative four. So yesterday somebody said to me, um, Um, somebody said to me, how do you know where to put it? This is telling me go through the x-axis. So I go through the x-axis at negative 4. Now the part that we did yesterday that was a little bit um, confusing is normally when we were in this form, we were looking here for the ha. But I told you as soon as they put an x on top, there's not, you're not going to look for the k value anymore. So the way we do this is whenever the exponent so we look at the exponent, the exponent on the x, and we look at the exponent on the x. What's the exponent on the top x? What is it? 2. What's the exponent on the bottom x? 1. So since it is larger exponent on top, when the, when the exponent is larger on top, I'll let you know there's never, ever an HA. So it's a little test that I can do. If this was uh, x to the third, still no ha. If this was x to the fourth, and this was, I'm pointing, if this was x to the fourth and this was x to the second, still no ha. There'll be no horizontal asymptote anytime it's larger on top. What if it's smaller on top? Well, the smaller on top is always zero, but usually something crosses out. And what if they're the same? We make the ratio. So those are the three things that happen. In this section, it's always larger on top, and you find out that you have no HA. And here comes in the new lesson. So if you have no HA, then you don't know your boundary lines. Usually the HA goes somewhere across this way, and then we use that as our boundary line. But we don't have an HA. Instead, we have what's called a slant asymptote. And a slant asymptote is exactly like it sounds. It's going to be an asymptote, another invisible line, but it's going to be slanted. It's going to look like a linear line with a slope to it. So the way we find that is we use division. We take this top one, this x to the second plus 2x plus 1, and we're going to divide it by the x plus 4. So we're going to go ahead and divide it. And you're like, Ms. Shaxton, we can't divide it. It doesn't go in nice. No, it doesn't go in nice at all. So we're going to go ahead and use what's called synthetic division. So with synthetic division, we've learned that this year. So this will be synthetic division. If you've got to watch a little video on it or something, we go ahead and we make the balcony. Is it coming back to us? What goes in the balcony? Negative four. Negative four. Really good. So right here, we look at what we're dividing by and we change the sign. Synthetic division is used a lot in math classes. There's sections where we use it like eight times in one problem. And what we do is we're dividing now. So we go ahead and we put the negative 4 in the balcony. What if this had been a minus 4? We'd put a positive 4. And then we list all the coefficients. The coefficients are the numbers in front of the x's with that little 1 at the end. So it's 1, 2, 1. And then we bring down that first 1 and now we're going to multiply and add and multiply and add and multiply and add. So we've done this before. This is the way we're finding the asymptote when there's no HA. When will this happen? Four times in your homework, twice on your review, and not on the quiz. So again, I'm just prepping you. If we saw this again on an assessment, it'd be on the 11th, and you'd have some more practice. So we're going to go ahead and multiply these two together, giving me a negative 4. And we're, I'll put it here. You're going to multiply, and then you're going to add. We're going to add straight down, and we're going to start that process again. Multiply and add, and that leftovers represents your slant asymptote. What you do is you take the first two numbers, and you make it into a linear. If it started as an x to the second, and I divided it as an, by an x, it just became an x to the first. And this is really weird for me because I'm telling you right now, the 9 does not matter. So the only part we use is the first two numbers, and we put an x on the first number, 
yeah, this goes here, and we have a little linear there. Now we went ahead and we used, um, so this one we could write none to, just to fill in the holes. So that's the new part. That's how we find the slant asymptote. And I'll help you with another on this part. A lot of the other part, like the factoring is, is old school. How do I graph this linear? Um, Angie put the phone away. And um, Jake, what would I put on the graph first if I'm going to graph this linear? The negative 2. The negative 2 goes down to the y-axis. It's a y-intercept. And then I'm going to use the slope. Arbor, what's the slope? It's just one, so we just go up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. What if you don't know how to um, graph a line? Well, if you don't know how to graph a line, you can go ahead over, you can hit table, and you could just type that in there, and you could use your table to graph that line. You'll see we're getting the same thing. So that's totally fine. Now, this is an invisible line, so a lot of times I make it dash. It's a boundary line. Remember, those asymptotes are going to be boundary lines. And then we'll go ahead and pitch up just a little bit. Now we'll pick some good values to see actually what the graph looks like. None of this is the graph. All of that is just the boundary line. And so now we'll pick some good values. Good values are values that are on either side of the green line. So um, we'll go ahead and pick some x values on either side of the green line. Get your plus today. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, we're back here. Um, so when we pick values for x, we're going to pick on either side of this left line. Daniel, what's on the other side of the green line on the left? What number would you have just picked? Negative five, I agree with you. And what would be on the right? Well, we're at negative four, so let's not pick that. That's the green line. So what's one more over to the right? So he's right. Negative five is right here. What's on the other side? Negative three. Beautiful. This is one section. I am not going to do this by hand. I don't want to plug those values into the top. I'm going to be a little lazy, and I'm going to go over to my calculator. I'm going to hit table, and I'm going to type this into my table. So everybody give it a shot. Put an N over D on there. We'll have X to the second plus 2X plus 1 all over X plus 4. And we'll go ahead and press Enter, Enter, Enter and find out what those values are for y. When we look, oh, there's the error. What does the error represent? The error represents the asymptote. That's the green line. And the numbers are going to get huge in here. That's okay. If the number gets huge and it doesn't fit, where are my eyes gonna go? To your table. So it's totally fine. It's not a big deal. So let's go ahead and see where these graph points are. We're going to go ahead and graph them now. So we'll go negative 5, and we're going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, all the way down there. Not a huge deal because what happens, let me um, go ahead and extend these asymptotes just a little bit. What happens is because I know that point, is in this section. Watch this. This is kind of cool. It curves and starts to approach those asymptotes. So it looks like a little curvy sideways graph because it's approaching the slant asymptote now. And now we'll go negative 3 and positive 4. And again, it's approaching that asymptote and looks a little bit like that. Now, for these graphs, if you look at my board, it says you're going to be able to use asymptotes and points of discontinuity. Asymptotes are points of discontinuity to sketch a graph. The graph does not have to be any more exact than just taking one point to the left and one point to the right for full credit. So this is sketching. You don't have to now do every single little point. If you'd like it more exact, you could pick some more points. And you could go ahead and graph that. You could graph negative 6, negative 12.5, negative 
you could grab that, you could grab that. It doesn't matter. As long as it looks like the sketch I have there, I'm a pig in mud, I'm super happy, and you have everything you need. I'll let you know the numbers in this homework, and there's only four of them, are going to stink. They are going to be stinky, stinky numbers. You're gonna get 40s and stuff like that. So if you just make a little sketch of it and it's in your table, you are in a good spot. So I already set you up for success um, in the homework. I made two of them over here. So I just went ahead and did two that um, are in your homework. We are gonna shorten it to just one through 10, um, seven through 10. So it, you get a point for every problem. So that's pretty generous. And what I'll do is we'll move over to another one together. I'll make sure everybody's set up with their homework out. Grab a piece of craft paper if you don't have one. Where do you guys have questions? So the reason I'm doing another one with you is because I think that um, synthetic division is a little old. We haven't done it for a while. You guys get set up with your graph paper and everything you need. I'll do attendance. And then we have 20 minutes to do four problems. So what's probably going to happen is you can trickle on into starting that review sheet that I'll give you. So I'll get that out in just a little bit. Give me just a second. I'm going to make sure this paper gets us up too, okay? So everybody get what they need. Graph paper. Who needs today's book page? Anybody need it? Today's book page because they don't have it? Okay, take a picture person and then send it to the next person, okay? And I did promise Carson that I put that blue sheet back up there and also um, Marco, this will help you too. So I'm gonna make this disappear for just a second as everybody's getting situated. Marco, the only lessons and um, Carson and anyone else that was late, um, the only lessons that will be on Tuesday's quiz are the ones from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So everybody should be able to take the weekend to get caught up if they missed a day throughout the week. So today's lesson is not on the quiz because my seventh period will not um, get a live lesson. They'll have to do it from a recording since it's not being able to ask questions and participate. I feel it's not fair to them. So because of them, I did not put this section on the quiz. But these three are. So when you're studying, these homeworks would help you prepare for this, but also the yellow worksheet for Monday will help you prepare for Tuesday's quiz. There's eight questions for graphs and four questions just asking about restrictions and also working backwards. If I give you asymptotes, you come up with the, um, with the equations. So just like what we did on the first homework on Tuesday. Marco, Carson, anybody have any questions about expectations? Okay. I think I'm pretty clear on this stuff. Okay, and then um, next week I will see you on Tuesday, so I won't be here on Monday. You got a sub. Um, if you're out on Monday, the 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 sheet will still be up, and I think I'm going to keep it recording as we do one more number seven together. Number seven's horrible numbers that I don't make the problems. I'm just trying to help you through them. So go ahead and um, go over to number seven, get it set up. I'll make sure everybody's with me, and then we'll go from there. Cool. Let's see. Okay. Oh, don't start making noises on me yet. Recording. I'm just going to record a little bit longer. Okay, so we have um, Pre out. If you guys want to keep an eye on, on Pre on Monday and just make sure he knows to bring all of his stuff. Um, Carson, what's up? Yeah, I haven't done it yet. Um, I'm afraid. I'm going to try it right now. I'm afraid that as soon as I go off this screen, it's going to stop my video. We will find out. I'm always too scared to do it. So actually, it's still recording. Yeah, let me put the key up. Thank you. I did I did remember that when I came in. And I was so busy. Uh, it's up there. I just haven't made it visible to you guys. Let's see, day two. Okay, tell me if you can, if you refresh, if you can see it now. And I'll put the review up before I leave at, um, at like lunchtime today. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, anytime you guys see that there's something not up, just let me know, just like that. Um, what do we miss? Who are we missing? Um, Trent's out. So, um, Arbor and um, Tanner, will you guys just remind Trent about the quiz on Tuesday? I mean, he's got his blue sheet, but just look out for the people you're sitting next to. The same with Pre. I know you're friends with Pre over here, you guys. Or tolerate him, huh? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> we love Pre. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and do another one together. 
Let's see what we can do. Okay, so when we look at this next one, they've already factored it for me, so I actually like it. It's x minus 4 and x minus 4 again over x plus 2. I'm not going to make you find the zeros, so you could just, whenever you see that, just ignore that. To find the zeros, you take the numerator, set it equal to zero. I don't think it's necessary for the graphing with our calculators. So unfortunately, it's all factored up, and I see that nothing cancels. So I'm kind of bummed about that. I'd rather they cancel than not cancel. On your quiz, I'll give you an HA blank and a VA blank. It'll look like this. And there might even be a hole blank. There's no holes on this. So no hole, and the reason why there's no hole is because nothing's canceling. So it has to cancel out. So we can go over to the VA. Um, Caleb, what's the corny little thing that Ms. Shackton taught you to remember which is, which is X and which is Y? What do we say? Hey, Vax, we say hey. Vax, I don't know who Vax is, but we're saying hey to him. And then we'll go ahead, and the one I usually find first is the VA. Giselle, I'm sure you're warmed up now. What would be the VA now? What is it? Yeah, we'd look at the X plus 2. So what's the VA? Negative 2, yeah. It is. We start at 725. We are so, like, that's not cool, right? So we'll have negative 2. But I would not like to start at 830 and get out at 430 like the middle school does. That's part of the reason I didn't want to teach middle school is it's those later hours. When we walk out the door at 2.30, I'm like super happy. I can make it to earlier yoga classes, go for a walk, enjoy the sunlight. So my husband did middle school. Okay, so now we'll look and, um, oh, wait a second. There's no number on the outside. I can't use the K value. So when we're talking about the HA, this is the tricky new part. See how the exponent's 2 and the exponent's 1? What are we seeing? The exponent is larger on top. So when it's larger on top, I think of the guys that have the muscles, they have no problems, they've already worked out, they're naturally got those big muscles. And so um, I don't know if that, but when you're larger on top, you got the big muscles, um, you have no problems, so you have no asymptote. I don't know, that's how I remember it. When it's smaller on top, they feel like a zero, so that's just the kind of corny ways I remember it. So you would actually write no HA here, and then this is where the new part comes in. If there's no HA, then you're going to have a slant asymptote. And this is why I'm helping with another one, because of this area right here, okay? This is all the new, the part that Giselle did, the VAs, that should be coming more natural. The factoring should be coming more natural. Let's go ahead and look. So if we go ahead and look here, we're gonna find a slant asymptote. Well, they left this in a factored form. I'm going to have to multiply that out so that I can do division. So it's going to be x to the second minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. And I'm going to add these two together so that now what can I do? I can divide that by the x plus 2. And when I do that, I'm just going to use synthetic division. Why? It's a shortcut. Yeah, perfect. I'm just recording. <laughs> um, it's a shortcut so that we can go ahead and find that slant asymptote. What will go inside the um, balcony is what? Ashton, what number should I put inside that balcony? If I'm dividing this by this. Negative 2. It's just a sign change. Yeah. So I'm going to do a sign change. I'm going to put a negative 2 inside my balcony, and then I'm going to go ahead and write the coefficient. Yeah, good. Good, 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 good. Good improvement, you guys. Uh, good, really good. Cool. Um, this is the extra credit, so it's up to you whether you need it or not. Just don't get to the end of the quarter and have an 89 and then beg me for a point, right? Because that's what I look at. So 1, negative 8, and 16. And then we'll bring down the first, multiply, and, mul and add, multiply, and add. And this right here will be our slant asymptote. We squeeze an x in there, and so it'll be y equals 1x minus 10. Now you can see the graph is uh, getting really large. 
It's going to probably go down here somewhere. I don't care how messy it is. If you're on your own paper, you got more space than I do. And we'll just go on up down to negative 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The slope will go up 1 over 1. So this is a great section because on top of learning the new material, we're also reviewing y equals mx plus b. I like to make it dashed because it isn't part of my answers. It's just going to go ahead and be um, the restrictions on my graph. It's going to be where it's approaching. So we're in the home run stretch now. So Ashton asked, does he have to do this? No, but anybody that just did this problem just got a point of extra credit. So if you um, need some extra credit points, do this assignment. And right now I'll pass out the review for Monday for someone like Ashton that's like, oh, I don't really want to do the extra credit, but maybe he'd like to get start, like started on Monday's lesson. But just for Monday, it's the review sheet. It's identical to your quiz. So you do you. You got your base there. You know what you need. So y'all are going to need the extra credit. Some of you have 111 already. Um, but this is a requirement for Monday, the yellow worksheet. This will be one of the four homeworks selected on Tuesday. So I'm just getting it out early because I have kids always ask for it early. We've got some really high achiever group classes. I've got valedictorian sitting in some sophomore class where that one's, you know, motivated. A lot of these kids are very motivated, so. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll pick two values. We'll pick two values that are on the left-hand side. Um, did anybody already do that? What did you pick for your x value? If we're at negative 2, you probably picked what? Negative 3, and what's on the other side of negative 2? So if I picked negative 3 going this way, what would be a negative 1? Yeah. So we usually pick the same numbers. I don't have those numbers on my key. I must have picked something different. Let's just plug it in now. When you plug it in, you can plug it in either all multiplied out or you can just go to the original format. Our calculators are pretty amazing. And we'll go enter, enter, enter. Is there anybody, CC, are you getting comfortable with the calculator? Do you need help putting that in? Why don't you make sure when you hit table, you can put that in in case you have any issues. I can clear them up today because I won't see you for a little bit. Most of the kids in the class are very comfortable with that. And then we'll go on up, and we see that error in holy Manoli. Holy, whoa, look at this. The numbers are huge. Do I care about that? Not at all. This is a, just a sketch. So we just got to really get it in the right spot. We're going to go negative 3 and negative 49 will be somewhere down there. I do not care that it doesn't look like more than just a sketch. It'll look a little bit like that. Is that really at negative 49? No. Who cares? It's just a sketch. And we're going to go negative 1, and we're going to go down to negative 25. Uh, wait a second. Oh, nope. We're going to go negative 1, and we're going to go where? Up to positive 25. Sorry. I was like, that ah, doesn't look right. So we'll go negative 1, and it'll be positive 25 somewhere up here. So what does this piece look like? It looks like it falls in that. They're usually diagonally across from each other, too. So um, if once I knew it was in this quadrant and I was making a mistake with my graphing and going down here, it's like, that doesn't look right. So that's something I just kind of say to myself. What I did is I got a piece of graph paper for each one because they were big and ugly, and this is as ugly as it gets. So as you go into the key, you'll see that I just moved on to a separate piece of paper for number nine. I'll put up number eight for anybody that's doing the current one. When I redid number seven, I made my key go by twos instead of by ones. You've got options to do that. And the zeros, I decided not to teach. So don't worry about the zeros. You can skip that part. Just go asymptote, slide up asymptote, and graph for full credit. Okay, is everybody done with seven? We'll put up eight, and then I'll walk the class. You can ask me any question you want. You can ask me anything from the yellow. We have got about eight more minutes. 
So maybe you're like, I'm not worried about the current lesson. I'm going to worry about the yellow. I can't do number three on the yellow. Ms. Jackson, come here and help me. So go ahead and let me know what you guys need. I'll stop the video. She had a lot of really good practice on alpha tilts here. But if you guys want to go ahead and try number eight, that's cool.